Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on the ERC. We're going to provide you with some updates from the Pikes Peak SBDC. As a reminder, if you need help with free consulting, practical training, business resources, business recovery, and continuity, please head over to pikespeaksbdc.org. We can't do any of this without our sponsors, El Paso County and Business Banking, the City of Colorado Springs, Park City Bank and Trust, Forest Springs Utilities, Vector Bank, and the SBA. And Brad Witten from Pikes Peak Financial Group is going to be updating us. Take it away, Brad. All right, hello everyone. Um, so we are going to do, shouldn't take too long, just kind of a quick update here on what's new uh, and where do we stand, I guess, with the employer retention credit. Uh, there's not a lot new per se. There's been some updates to the rules and the guidelines, and uh, but there's still a lot of questions out there. So uh, I wanna, start with a quick, you know, background of what is the, uh, the employee retention credit. Uh, it was originally passed as part of the CARES Act, you know, way back when uh, this COVID pandemic first, uh, you know, started, which has only been a couple of years, but it feels like a lifetime at this point. Um, but, uh, you know, it's essentially a, a credit that at the time was 50% of up to 10,000 of eligible wages paid to an employee in a qualified quarter. Um, now, what is a qualified quarter? Well, at the time, and th this is where the changes have been, is kind of modifying what is eligible, how much wages are eligible, and when are you eligible? Um, but the basic parameter, you know, started out as a credit for businesses whose operations were either fully or partially suspended by government order. And even right there, I mean, fully suspended, I think that's pretty clear, but, you know, partially suspended, that created a lot of questions. Of what does that mean? What, you know, what is partially, uh, you know, suspended? And is there some sort of significance there or, or limit uh, over who's eligible? Then the next test was if you weren't, you know, fully or, or partially suspended by a government order, uh, then it had to be a quarter in which you experienced a significant decline in gross receipts, which was defined as a 50% or greater reduction in your gross revenue. Now, that was relaxed a little bit to essentially be, you know, 20% decrease. Um, but nonetheless, you had to have a significant decline in gross receipts to be eligible. Then, uh, and, and at the time too, you know, one last thing, originally, if uh, you received a PPP loan, you weren't eligible to get the employee retention credit as well. So it was kind of an either or thing. I think that was because of the, you know, at the time the mindset was, you know, two weeks to, to slow the spread kind of thing. And I think the thought was it was going to be short term. So if you got a PPP loan, you would get through just fine. And, you know, what ultimately happened was anything but short term. But, uh, but I think that was why initially you couldn't do both. Then, you know, in uh, uh, this, uh, the December 27th relief bill, you know, of 2020, uh, it, it changed a few things. So the amount of wages increased to $10,000 per quarter per employee instead of per year. It uh, extended the eligible period from the end of 2020 through June of 2021 and increased from 50% of qualified wages to 70% of qualified wages. And then there's where that change I mentioned a moment ago where the significant decline is uh, is now you know less than 80 percent, or to say another way, your revenue's down more than 20 percent instead of 50 percent for the same quarter in 2029. And then the big one that made a lot of people eligible who weren't eligible for most of 2020, which was if you got a PPP loan, you were still eligible for the ERC. You just couldn't use the same dollars. So wages that were paid for with the PPP loan couldn't also be used to generate an employee retention credit, um, which, you know, I'm gonna start saying ERC for short, but that's what it is. So that was the big change that made a lot of people have to go back and, and amend returns or, or relook at eligibility. Um, then, yet again, the uh, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 expanded the availability 
um, to employers who qualify as a recovery startup business. Um, now, what that means, it was loosely defined, I still think it's fairly loose, but it's defined as an employer who began a trade or business after February 15th, 2020. Um, so after the start of the pandemic, now you have to be a small business, which, you know, it's defined as gross receipts under 100, or I'm sorry, 100, that'd be huge, uh, gross receipts less than $1 million, and you have to have not otherwise been eligible under the full or partial suspension of operating, you know, the rules we just discussed. So if you are already eligible under those rules, you're not also eligible as a recovery startup, you know, business, can't double dip. And that change applied to wages paid between June 30th and December 30th. So June 30, 2021 and January 1st, 2022, um, before that date, is who, you know, if you are a recovery startup business, you can take advantage of the ERC. One other thing that... Uh, you know, it was done, um, which I don't think I, I list here necessarily, but um, it extended from June 30th uh, to December 31st, 2021, the period for the employer retention credit. Then subsequent to that, the end date for the employer retention credit, employee retention credit was moved back from December 31st to September 30th, 2021. So it's a long-winded way of saying that the ERC remains in place um, through September 30th, 2021 for existing businesses that were not a recovery startup business. And for a recovery startup business, the ERC was in effect through the end of 2021, 12-31-2021. So this is why there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of different rules and carve-outs and, you know, it's, it's just complicated. Now, um, eligibility rules have also been frequently updated as the IRS has defined clearer guidelines around various things that are defined in the, in the law and kind of clarified eligibility. Um, one of the things that they, they tried to clarify, which, you know, I think they made it as clear as mud, but um, you know, they tried to clarify what it meant to be partially shut down. And so that had to be more than a nominal portion of your business operations had to be suspended. Uh, to be considered more than nominal, the gross receipts from the portion of business that was suspended had to be more, at least 10% of your total gross receipts. So think a restaurant that, you know, was limited to uh, takeout orders or, you know, to-go orders only, no more, you know, in dining in the restaurant. Well, that would be more than 10% of their business operation, so they would be eligible, even though they weren't fully shut down by the, you know, government order. Um, then they also said, okay, now there's also another test that you can either meet that one or the hours of service performed by employees in that portion of the business that was suspended is not less than 10% of the total number of hours performed by everyone in all lines of business. Um, so they, they tried to create a, a couple of objective, computable tests here. Um, not sure that it's exactly that easy in most businesses, um, but they, they at least tried. And so, you know, things like retail that you know, if your hours were limited, you were in a mall and, you know, your your opening hours were limited, you were still allowed to be open, but only for, you know, a portion of the day, not all day anymore. You know, you're potentially eligible um, if more than 10% of your hours have been, you know, limited. Uh, potentially, because there's a lot of ifs and maybes, there's a lot of FAQs out there on the IRS website that defines specific situations for specific, you know, businesses, um, which has created a lot of work, right? A lot of work for employers, a lot of work for professionals that help with these kinds of things. Um, but there's a lot of money potentially out there if you are eligible that you don't want to miss. 
And, you know, the, the question I get a lot is, is it too late? You know, I didn't claim the ERC. I didn't know. You know, I'm just learning about all these things, whatever the case may be. You know, they just haven't applied for the ERC and they're wanting to know if, if they still can. That's one of the most common questions that I get asked. Um, and the, the answer is, no, it's not too late to claim the ERC for 2020 uh, quarters. So any period of 2020 that you may have been eligible for the ERC, you have until April 15th of 2024, so a little less than two years still, to go back and amend uh, your payroll returns and make a claim for the, the credit and claims for 2021, so any period in the 2021 year, um, can be made until April 15th of 2025. So there's still a substantial amount of time um, to go out and determine if you're eligible uh, and get the you know returns amended to claim the credit. Uh, it is you know tricky. What, what I encourage businesses to do is if they think that they are possibly eligible, um, you know, need to meet with a professional, a CPA, a, you know, bankers. Some bankers are very well versed in the, the rules. Uh, you know, somebody that understands the rules and can help you go through them and determine if you are actually eligible. I'm a little cautious of some of the, the you know, payroll companies and, you know, businesses that have popped up just that, you know, that are just like, send me all your payroll reports and I will file all of the amended returns. Um, you know, I, I think that's a little risky. You know, everybody's not automatically eligible. They've expanded eligibility. There are a lot of people that are eligible, but, but I, I encourage people to understand why they are eligible before just making a claim. Um, if you don't know why and you just file the amended return, you know, I think you're putting yourself at risk. Uh, because the IRS has identified ERCs as a, a risk that there are, you know, people out there, you know, there's companies out there that are, you know, that are taking advantage of the rules um, because the IRS has, uh, you know, prioritized issuing these refunds. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean they're coming fast, maybe fast by IRS, you know, standards, but not fast by a reasonable person standards. But they are trying to push out these refunds, which means that there's not a lot of scrutiny on the front end. It's just sort of like, you know, okay, you made a claim. Here's the money. You know, let's help you stay open. Let's get money back in your pocket. And then we'll, at some point, circle back and, and take closer look at some of the claims and, and investigate ones that we think are, you know, iffy. Yeah. So, you know, I... I I think that there's a lot of gray. There's there's some very clear instances of eligibility, and then there's some that maybe aren't as clear, but could potentially qualify. So, you know, long story short, um, don't just blindly amend your returns and claim a credit. You know, make sure that whoever you're working with to to pursue an ERC is helping you understand why you're eligible, um, so that you can you know at least have a level of of comfort for any claims that you are you know, making for this credit. Um, so that's about it. Um, you know, please let uh, the SBDC, you know, know if, if you'd like any consulting or more detailed information on your specific situation. Um, but uh, certainly if there's any, you know, potential under these rules that you think you might be eligible or could potentially see some you know, refunds, then, then please do look into that before the time period elapses.